So we've been in this series leading up to Easter. Right? There's a reason why we did forgiveness the month before Easter. We're talking about forgiveness leading up to the day of Easter, the resurrection of Jesus, the, the, the ability to have our sins forgiven by God. Right? We've been discussing this idea. How do I forgive? How do I even comprehend forgiving someone who hurt me? Last week we asked, do you have the faith to forgive? And this is so important. This idea of forgiveness and learning about forgiveness is so important because we live in a society in which offense, being offended, is the currency of our culture. Being offended is the currency of our culture today. We love being offended. We love the fact that everybody's website and everybody's video now has a comment section because then we get to express how upset we are and how offended we are by what they're doing, right? When, when, and then, listen, this is just my own soapbox. This is my own problem. You could have just swiped it away and kept moving. But the currency of our culture is, because you upset me, I got to let you know. Yet, yet, forgiveness. What was that? Forgiveness is the currency of the kingdom of God. Offense is the currency of our current situation, our current culture. But forgiveness is the currency of the kingdom of God. As long as we harbor unforgiveness in our hearts, we are locked in bondage. And oh, how we love to think that by us not forgiving somebody, we're locking them in bondage. Oh, I'm going to show them. I will never forgive you as long as I live. They forgot your name. They don't even know you exist. You think you're doing something to somebody because you ain't never going to forgive them. But it's you who is locked in the prison called your past, in the prison of a previous experience. You are stuck there by not freeing yourself with forgiveness. Here's my hope. Here's my hope. If you could forgive just one person that you've needed to forgive, by the end of this series, it's been a success. It's been a success. If that person is you, that needs you to forgive you, if you can do that by the end of this series, then it's been a success. But here's the big idea today. I've waited until now because next week is Easter. This is kind of the punch you in your face sermon. And I've been kind of easy going so far about forgiveness. But today's a little punch you in the face. That's all right? When's the last time you punched in the face? Been a while, huh? All right. Put this up on the screen. You must forgive because Christ has forgiven you. You must forgive. Like, I don't like being told what to do. I've always been a little bit of a rebel. Uh, when, thing, when people put things up, they say, mandatory X, Y, Z, I'm going the other way, right? Even when I know I have a clear inspection sticker on my car, but I see one of those inspection sticker checkpoints on the road, I really want to just turn around and drive the other way because I really don't want you up in my business, right? I'm just that kind of person, like, it's something that I struggle with. Like, if you tell me it has to be done exactly this way, I'm going to figure out a different way to do it. Um, John Mark and, Pastor John Mark and I were talking this week, and he was like, you know, I really started doubting that you were going to be able to do this thing, but I didn't want to say anything. And I said, oh, you should have, because doubting me motivates me. Go ahead and doubt me. Go ahead. <laughs> you got to break your voice with that. Go ahead and doubt me, because I'm going to show you 
that I can get it done, right? So when the Bible says to me, I must forgive, talking to like that. What do you mean I, what do you mean I must? Like I don't have a choice? Like there's no choice in the matter whether I can, because I really like to harbor unforgiveness, but the Bible's telling me that I must, there's no option. I have to forgive. So let me talk about you for a minute. Let me ask you a couple questions, all right? Normally the sermons are about me and you get to eavesdrop on my own conversation, but I'm gonna get in your business for a second. Is that all right? And I'm gonna ask you to be as transparent as I am when I preach. Is that okay? Is there someone in your life that you need to forgive? Did someone do something to you years ago that you need to forgive? Raise your hand. Okay? Did someone do something to you in 2020 that you need to forgive? Someone did something to you last week. Someone did something to you yesterday. Someone said something to you this morning. Do not raise your hand because they're sitting right next to you. I won't ruin your day like that. And for someone in here to say, no, I've done it all. I don't have to forgive anybody. I already got a note saying that somebody in here driving a Ford Fusion cursed out a parking lot usher this morning. No, I'm just kidding. I made that up. I mean, <laughs> I made that up. Whoever has a Ford Fusion, they broke out in a sweat. Ugh. Oh, my God. Let me tell you this. We all... We all, everybody in this room, we all have situations in our lives that need some attention. They may be very different situations. They may be very different problems, but we all have situations in our lives that need attention. We all were raised by an imperfect mom and dad. Every single one of us were raised by an imperfect mom and dad. Now, maybe you were not raised by your biological mom and dad, but somebody filled that role, and whoever that person was, although you esteem them and you love them and they were amazing, they were not perfect. Which means you have scars. Which means you were yelled at one time, because they were in a bad mood and they were angry and they took it out on you and it caused some sort of wound. All of us in this room right now, if we sat down by a campfire one night, sun's going down, setting's just right, and we had one of those open heart discussions, every single one of us in this room could discover and uncover a wound that they have in their heart, from the way they were raised, that they haven't actually dealt with. They haven't actually signed it off and signed it over to the Lord. We all have it. I wanna show you today how important forgiveness is to God. I wanna show you how important forgiveness is to God. And we can laugh and we could joke, and we have a lot of fun about Scripture. I believe that God is fun. I believe that he's exciting. I believe that God laughs a lot. I don't think God is as serious as church tries to make him. Seriously, I don't. <laughs> I think God's a lot of fun. I think God laughs at me a lot. The other day, uh, a couple of my buddies, we decided that we were gonna go for a, a hike. We're getting in shape for a trip that we're going on. And, and, and we decided that we we're gonna go take a hike up this place called Mount Beacon. Um, it is the inverse of hell. As we climbed the mountain, I felt as if I was descending into the bowels of hell. It's like 1,600 feet in two miles. 
I mean the junk is straight up like this. I'm literally walking like this. I, I have unforgiveness in my heart towards people sitting on this side of the building right here because of what they did to me on Friday. But, but again, I, I think God was just like kind of laughing at me like, oh, you went on your first hike on a mountain like that, you silly, silly boy. Those are kind of the conversations I have with God because I'm sitting there repenting like, God, my legs hurt. He's like, you decided to go for a hike up this mountain today. All right, anyway. So I think God's very fun. I think he's laughing. I think he's excited. But then there's some stuff where he's like, listen, all joking aside, there's some serious stuff that we need to deal with. And in Matthew 18, 21, it's one of those conversations that Jesus is having with his disciples. Matthew 18, 21, it says this. Then Peter came to Jesus. You know, it's always Peter who has to start the hard questions because everybody else is too afraid. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him up to seven times? Now, if you've been here for this series, you will remember that this is not the first time that this question has been asked. They've asked this thing different times in different ways and it's always like, do I gotta forgive somebody seven times? Jesus has just told them about the parable of the lost sheep. He's told them how to deal with a brother who has fallen into sin. He has just told them how to deal with offense, and now Peter has questions. Peter's got some questions. He was like, I get the parable about the lost sheep. I get the parable about someone falling into sin. But if someone is in sin and someone messes up, how many times do I have to forgive them? Seven times? Watch this. Jesus said to him, I do not say that you have to do it seven times. I didn't say that. I didn't say seven times, but I say to you up to 70 times, times mark, seven. He didn't say 70 plus seven. He said 70 times seven. I'm no mathematician, Ken, you can correct me, but that's 490 times, I think. 490 times. Times in one day, I have to forgive you? Yo, the second time, you didn't mean it. Right? The first time, I'll give it. It was an oops. But the second time you do me dirty, and then you say, oops, I'm sorry, you didn't mean it. You didn't mean you were sorry. Say, and isn't that the thing about us as people? See, but if you were sorry, you would have felt it. Let me ask you this. Can I ask you a question? I'm not gonna look at anybody because I don't want you to raise your hand. Are you telling me that every single sin that you've ever done in your life, you were sorry for? I'll tell you straight out, that dude who cut me off on the highway, he deserved more than just a honk in the back of his head. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't wrong by that. He cut me off, right? But me getting to anger is wrong. But I'm not sorry for it. I'm not sitting back, oh, Lord Jesus. I'm so sorry that I got angry at the guy who cut me off. I'm like, yo, Lord, why did you make anger a sin? That just don't make any sense. I mean, me and God have these conversations. That guy deserved that. He needs to learn how to drive. I think there should be annual driving tests. Anyway, I'm getting upset right now just thinking about it. <laughs> Forgive me, Jesus. 490 times in one day I have to forgive somebody? Then Jesus goes on. That's not enough that he just gave the answer, 490. He then says, let me tell you something, Peter. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts. He wants to show him how serious he is about this. This certain king wants to settle accounts with his servants. 
And when he had begun to settle accounts, one guy was brought before him who owed him 10,000 talents. Now, that don't mean nothing to you today because we don't trade talents. We don't hand out bags of gold and silver. But 10,000 talents was equivalent to 20 years of daily wages. So take whatever you make in a year times 20, and that's what you owed. How are you paying that back? How are you coming up with that money? Are you refinancing your house? Like even then, maybe your house won't even be worth that. How could you possibly pay back 20 years of, how did you get in that much debt? How'd you do that? But as he was not able to pay, look what his penalty was. Are you ready for this penalty? He was commanded to be sold with his wife and his children and all he had so that the payment could be made. Yeah. I've been in some debt before. <laughs> but there are nobody trying to take me, my kids, and my house, and my two dogs. Like, hey, why his dogs, too? But, yeah, why you got to put the dogs in this? Why you got to take everything I owned, right? Everything to, everything that you've ever touched, sold. Because of the debt that you owed. The servant fell down before him, begged. I could just imagine. I could just imagine the anxiety of your debt being called, and you know there's nothing you can do to pay this back. And it's due right now. It's due on the spot. I can see weeping. Master! Have patience with me. Patience, you had 20 years. Patience with me. I will pay you all. Every businessman knows, no, you're not. No, you're not. There's no way you can. Even if you worked full time and gave me your entire paycheck, then how do you live? You can't do it. You cannot pay this back. Then the master of the servant, look at this, was moved with compassion. Where's our compassion for one another? Where's our compassion for one another when it comes to politics? Where's our compassion when someone, by their own American right, can have their own viewpoint? Where's compassion? Compassion. And listen, and, and, and he has compassion on someone who personally owes him 20 years of income. He's been wronged. He had compassion, watch this, he had compassion on him he released him and forgave him the debt. Forgave him the debt. Forgave the debt. It would have been compassion just to give the, the guy the time to pay it back. That would have been compassion. It would have been compassion to say, all right, you know what? I'll give you a year. To come with them. That would have been compassion. But he completely goes above and beyond and says, I want to show a compassion that you don't have the capacity to understand. I'm going to wipe the debt. You don't owe me a thing. Go. I'm not going to call it again. You don't lose your house, you don't lose your puppies, wife, kids. Go. Debts forgiven. But what did you know? 
that servant is just like some of us. Oh man, this got to make you mad. This got to make you mad. But that same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. A hundred denarii is one day's wages. Hold on a second. I got to do the math on this. Let's just say 365 times 20 years, 7,300 days. This guy owes you one day. You owed 7,300 days of money. This guy owes you one day. One day! And he laid hands on him, it says. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat. Got you in a chokehold. Yo, where's my money? I can shoot the life out of you right now. Where's my money? Come on, somebody. Maybe you had him like this, I don't know. My money. Pay me what you owe me. Anxiety in the chest. Knows he can't pay it back. Knows he don't have no money. He falls to the ground and pleads the same prayer. He cries out for the same mercy. Have mercy on me. I can't pay it back right now, but if you just give me some time, give me some time, be patient with me. I will pay you back all I owe you. Wouldn't you think, wouldn't you think in that moment, compassion coming to his heart? Wouldn't you think in that moment, Man, it wasn't just 10 minutes ago I was in that same situation. It wasn't just 10 minutes ago I was crying those same tears. It wasn't just 10 minutes ago I was going to lose my wife and my kids and my house and my puppies. And it is within my power to free this guy and give him joy and peace and freedom just like I'm feeling. Wouldn't you think? But it says, but he would not. But he would not. Go to the next screen. Oh, there it is. And he would not. He would not. But he went and threw him into prison Tell he should pay the debt. Now, how does that make any sense? You're going to put this guy in jail so he can't work so he pays you back. Whatever. Now, I'm going to give you a little inside scoop. When you, get, when you mess up, because I've been... I've been raised with this kind of guilt and this kind of fear. And it's so funny. Because one side of the faith movement wants to tell you that you can tread on serpents, you can take up any deadly thing that shall by no means harm you, that the devil's defeated. But then on the flip side, the faith movement wants to say that you're opening and closing doors for the devil to have access to your life all day long. Straight bugs me out. Bugs me out. The church world gives the devil too much power. Either he's defeated or he ain't. I'm going to tell you how you get in trouble. I'm going to tell you where things get messed up. And it's right here. The dude sinned, right? He sinned again. He was forgiven, but he would not forgive. He te now, ag again, it is in his right to make the guy pay him back. He can, that, he's, he can, that's his right. Everything he did is his right. But in light of forgiveness... 
in light of what he just experienced, he should have extended it. And when he didn't, this is where we get in trouble. Are you ready? So when his fellow servants saw what he had done, listen, man, it ain't the devil out there prowling around all the time trying to, trying to mess you all up. It's your own friends. It's, it's all of us gossiping about each other behind our backs. That's where we get ourselves in trouble. Can't keep our own dang mouth shut about each other. Come on, some. I told you, punch you in the face today. We run in our mouths about each other. We tell each other secrets. I was asking you to pray with me and help me. Next thing I know, you put my business on Facebook. I thought you were praying for me. I didn't realize that the prayer chain turned to gossip chain. I didn't realize you wanted to be the first person to post when someone messes up. Yeah, that's my biggest problem with the church world, man. Got Christian magazines, but the first thing they want to do is publicize when a, a pastor messes up. That's the biggest thing that they want to put out there. Come on, bro. Like, we're Christians and we're crucifying our own. Servants saw. Servants saw what he did. They were grieved. They were angry. And they went and they told the master what this guy had just done. Then his master calls him in. Oh, you done messed up now. <laughs> you, ooh, you done messed up now. You wicked servant. Now, listen, y'all. This is God talking to you when someone hurts your feelings and you won't forgive them. This is God talking to you. This is God talking to me when I'm gonna harbor an offense in my heart. I could never forgive them. This is God talking to you. Ready? You wicked individual. I forgave you all your debt because you begged me. Because you called on the name of the Lord. You repented of your sin. I forgave you all your transgressions. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due him which basically means he was going to be tortured to the day he died. So my heavenly father also will do to each of you from his heart who does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Now again, Jesus is still speaking under law in light of the cross. God is not angry. But I will tell you this. Why in the world do you think you have the power or the right to harbor unforgiveness towards somebody and yet you believe that you should deserve heaven. You got a blind spot. You got a blind spot. You're putting yourself in a position more powerful than God. That's what the servant tried to do. Well, I was forgiven, but I hold the power to not forgive. Whoa, whoa, did you forget who your master is? Did you forget what our currency of the kingdom is? The currency of the kingdom's forgiveness. The currency of the culture is offense. I graciously forgave you a lifetime of debt, and you couldn't forgive a daily debt? I forgave an eternal debt, yet you want to harbor unforgiveness to someone who lied to you? You want to harbor unforgiveness from someone who stole from you? You want to harbor unforgiveness from someone who hurt you, who betrayed you, yet you were forgiven an eternal trespass? Let me tell you something today. 
there's a deficiency in our ability to earn forgiveness. Just like the man in the story who owed 20 years, he could never pay that back. We cannot pay back. We could not pay back the fall of humanity. If all of mankind for all of eternity teamed up and said, we're gonna be really, really good and behave, we still could not in all of the lifespan of all of humanity could not do enough to earn the forgiveness of our sins to God. We just couldn't. We could not. You cannot worship enough. You cannot pray enough. You cannot serve the poor enough. You cannot behave well enough to deserve the forgiveness of God. He has shown it to all of us because of his compassion because of his mercy, and because of his grace. If you're in here today, and you think that you are a good enough person to deserve heaven, your pride alone disqualifies you from that. It. That's the goodness of God. The Bible says it is the goodness of God that leads man to repentance. I, God, I cannot pay you back. I can't behave well enough. There's thoughts that go through my mind that I don't want to go through my mind. Paul says, I war against myself daily. The things I know I should do, I don't do. And the things that I'm not supposed to do, I end up doing those things. But grace. But the grace of God. I got to tell you something today. You gained from God more than you deserve. We all gained from God more than we deserved. There, there is, although we are forgiven, although the slate is wiped clean, although he holds nothing against us, inside of every man, we are indebted to God. We are. We are indebted to God. I'm not saying that we're in debt. We don't have to pay it, but inside of us, we know that we're indebted. I could never earn. I could never deserve. And so all he asks, this is what God asks, and this is where the church has missed it. This is where the church has missed it. Let me, and if I sound like a heretic, then that'll be between me and God one day. Because I could be totally wrong on this. When God says live a life in such a way that brings honor to me, I don't think he meant don't make any mistakes. I don't, think he said, I don't think he meant try really, really hard every single day to not sin. When God said to us, live your life in such a way that brings honor to me, I think God expected us to be full of joy every day. I believe that God wanted us to enjoy our lives. My greatest moments in my home are when my kids are laughing. Like that belly, contagious laugh. And I don't even have to be in the room. I don't even have to know what the joke was about. I don't even have to know what inappropriate show they're watching on TV. Because that's... <laughs> But at the sound of that belly laugh with their three voices that kind of all sound alike, I'm in a totally different room and I just like, it brings a smile to my face. It makes me chuckle because they're happy and they're full of joy and they're full of life. And when God says live a life that's honoring to him, He's saying to us, live in the grace provided. Live in the joy of your salvation. And as we go along, and I live in that joy, when there's areas of my life that are out of alignment, he'll deal with me. He'll call on that. He'll say, you know what, all right, now let's work on this one. So we're on this hike. We're training for stuff, and getting ready for a trip. And one of the guys, is, as he sees us maybe not hiking the right way or having the right form, he'll kind of call it out. Hey, 
Now, be careful, because when you're walking like that, you could twist your ankle, so make sure that your steps are very, you're very conscious about your steps in this next area. He's coaching, he's calling it out, and I believe that's how God does. He comes in, he gently comes in behind us, like, hey, listen, there's now gonna be a, a rough patch. I'm letting you know there's a rough patch ahead. Make sure your steps are firm. A lot of people twist their ankles in this area. Be careful. And he comes along with this gentle correction. Be careful, man. Be careful when you see some guy in the name of God. That's him. That's not God. That's that guy's own anger, his own judgment. Come on. Listen, if I'm wrong, listen, if I'm wrong, God will deal with me, all right? But why would you want to go to a church? Why would you want to serve a God that's angry at you all the time? You forgive because you've been forgiven. You cannot give what you do not have. But so that's why he for gave you. He gave it to you before you needed it. So that when you needed it, you could also give it. Ephesians 4.32, I'm a little bit over time, but we got, this is good stuff. Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you, right? So this is an equation. There has to be three things that go into this. Ready? Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another. Just be kind. Just be kind. Can you like smile at people? Be kind. But it's not just smiling. Being kind is when you walk into a conversation where people are gossiping about somebody, you end it, or you walk away. Be kind. Don't add the, to the fuel. Be kind. to. I mean, listen, if we could just do that, we'd be in a whole lot better spot. Being kind to each other. Being kind is thinking the best of people, not automatically believing the worst. So then he says, okay, be kind to one another. Then he says, be compassionate to one another. In another translation, it says, being tender-hearted. How am I tender-hearted to someone who broke my heart? It's so much easier to be cold-hearted. I'm never gonna let them close to my heart again. I'm never gonna love like that again. Hmm. Isn't it funny how there are certain things that we can be compassionate about, but other things we can't be compassionate about? It's so easy to be compassionate about starving puppies on TV. Oh, look at all those starving puppies. How much, $32 a month? Oh, I can do that. And it's the same puppy from like 25 years ago. It has eaten, it was adopted, and it's dead. And you're still spending $32 a month for that same dog. Anyway, it's so, it's so easy. It's so easy to be compassionate about certain things, but be compassionate to someone who has a different view than me? I'm gonna go there. Be compassionate to someone who has a different sexual identity than me? I know. I know. What would Jesus do in the climate today? You think Jesus would be going around judging everybody? You think Jesus would be going around all nasty? Listen, I'm gonna tell you this right now. If you ever think that you have the power to judge somebody, then you better be able to walk up to them, lay your hands on them, and pray for them, and free them from whatever problem they have. If you can't do that, then shut up. Because that's what Jesus would have did. That's what Jesus would have done. If he didn't like what someone was doing, he would say, be free. Be free from that. Be set free. Be forgiven. Be healed. Move on. Number three, forgive one another. 
So I can fake being kind. Oh, praise the Lord. Good morning, brother. But inside, I know what you did last summer. You can fake compassion. Let me hold the door for you. Oh, let me help you. But forgive? You can't fake forgiveness. You can't fake forgiveness because forgiveness is an inside job. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. You can't fake forgiveness. I have to forgive, not because it's easy, but because I'm commanded to. Ready? 1 John 4, 20. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates his brother or sister is a liar. Eba, you just punched me in the mouth again. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or a sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God. Can't do it. Can't do it. I mean, you can, you can dance to a song in church, but you can't love God. You can't really love God if you hate somebody. He has given us a command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and their sister. I'm just telling you this, God ain't playing games out on these streets. <laughs> God ain't playing games out there. He's throwing it straight out at us. This is how important forgiveness is to him. I forgave you everything. Forgive one another. Forgive one another. It's the least that you can do. Love one another just as Christ has loved you. Maybe you're here today, and the reason why you can't forgive is because you haven't received forgiveness. You see, forgiveness isn't just one of those things. The forgiveness of God isn't just one of those things that just happens. You've got to receive it. You've got to receive it. You've got to, you've got to make a conscious decision. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I receive the forgiveness of my sins, which transforms me and creates a new being. So maybe, maybe you are so full of anger. Maybe you are still so full of resentment because you've never actually made the conversion. Maybe you've never accepted the forgiveness into your life that, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And it would be so unfair to let you walk out of here today without giving you that opportunity. And here at Family Church, we make it very simple. We want to pray a prayer with you. And, and, and we like to pray out loud so that it's a confession made with our mouths. And the prayer goes like this. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. I receive the forgiveness of the Father today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you're watching us online today, would you type amen in one of the chat rooms and one of our online hosts will connect with you and send you our six-day devotional called Starting Point. It talks about how to get started in your walk in Christianity. If you're in the room today and you prayed that for the first time, would you give me the honor to celebrate you for two quick seconds? Would you wave at me and say, hey, I prayed that for the first time today? Anybody real quick as I look across the room? Yeah, I see you. Yeah, I see you. Awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> to you as well, we have a starting point book. It's a six-day devotional. It's available right at the Welcome Center, right outside these doors. We'd love to get that to you. Uh, maybe you're on the fence today. You're like, you know, uh, Pastor Mike, the sermon was okay, church is all right, but I'm still on the fence. We have a booklet at the Welcome Center called Welcome Home. It talks about Christianity, it talks about salvation, what the Christian life is about, and at the end of it is the prayer, same prayer that we just prayed, it's in the back of that book. Uh, if you'd like that, stop by the Welcome Center, ask for the Welcome Home book, they'd love to give it to you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today that your word will never return to you void but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. We thank you, Lord, that everything we set our hands to will prosper and be successful. We thank you for the power to forgive because you have forgiven us. 
We thank you for today in Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Offering baskets are at the doors.